This story doesn't get any more bizarre, you guys. It went from the absolute bottom of the barrel, worst car buying experience that I've ever had. I didn't haggle. I didn't even negotiate. Folks, how you doing? Good, I'm looking for Mike. That was probably the worst thing I could have ever done. Who said that? <laughs> I heard you. That torqued me. I'm like, just give me my truck. I got a tax deduction I need to take. Second week in November came and went. Third week in November came and went. Fourth week in November, well guess what? Turkey day is over. I should have a pickup truck. They had it on a lot next door. But I didn't really know what next door meant. Mm, we're not gonna talk about that. And the worst possible answer came back to me. What? A rail yard in Indiana. Zero, 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 zero. My first Dodge pickup truck I've owned and I immediately noticed some things that worst freaking mirrors I've ever seen. I'm like, why are you calling me now? I'm sorry I couldn't pick up the phone earlier. One of my coworkers just died in my arms. Bottom of the barrel, worst car buying experience that I've ever had to the absolute top, cream of the crop. Can't believe this dude actually went this far to make up for all of the crap that happened before it. And you're gonna hear that story right now. So let's get into it. It was early November and I needed a tax deduction and what a better way than to buy a brand new truck. Except I wanted something very specific, a regular cab truck. And I know that doesn't sound specific, but to find one of those is getting more and more difficult. I called up my Chevy dealer and my GMC dealer both. I don't care what that guy in the interview said. I think all trucks probably have their little tiny things that go wrong with them. And I was still willing to buy one, except my Chevy dealer calls me back and says, Bad news, we don't have a regular cab pickup truck in the entire United States. I'm like, what the heck? The GMC guy, same story. He didn't have any and he wasn't planning on getting any until late 2019. So I called up Ford. I like Fords. My two Ford gasser trucks have been phenomenal. I wouldn't buy a Ford diesel ever again, but I love my two gassers because they're just rock solid and I know all of the flaws all about them and I'm willing to live with those to get that tax deduction. Except the Ford guy calls me back and says, we don't have a pickup truck. I'm like, I don't want an extended cab. The reason I don't want an extended cab is if you look at the average person that has an extended cab, it becomes their garbage can. All of that extra room behind them, literally they just toss stuff over their shoulders and it just accumulates up. I don't need it. If somebody's not gonna be sitting back there, I'll put my tools in a toolbox behind the bed. That shorter cab also helps me do my job to squeeze in and out of tight spaces with snow plows. I'll take a regular cab pickup truck any day of the week. So I went to Dodge and guess who had my pickup truck? Dodge had my pickup truck. All right, you guys, we just got here and I have not seen this truck ever, not once. And I don't see it yet. Except they didn't have it on the lot. They had it on a lot next door. But I didn't really know what next door meant. I got the price from them and I didn't haggle. I didn't even negotiate. That was probably the worst thing I could have ever done. They said, they texted me the price and I'm like, just give me my truck. I got a tax deduction I need to take. Well, that was in the first week in November. The second week in November came and went and I didn't have a pickup truck. I'm like, all right, maybe, you know, holidays, whatever. Third week in November came and went, and I didn't have a pickup truck. I'm going, hmm, all right. Well, I get the holidays. I'm using that excuse. Fourth week in November, well, guess what? Turkey day is over. I should have a pickup truck. I don't have a pickup truck. The first week in December comes, and now I'm starting to get a little salty. I'm thinking, it's been almost a month. It's been almost a month to date that I ordered this pickup truck and I still don't have a pickup truck. So I called up and I said, where's my pickup truck? And the worst possible answer came back to me. Well, it's at a rail yard in Indiana. I'm like, what? A rail yard in Indiana? I thought it was next door. I thought it was one state over, just a drive away. Indiana's like 450 miles away. That's not next door. That's like two states away. So let's go meet Mike. Let's see how he's doing. 
wonder what everybody's gonna think when we roll in with a camera on. I don't know. You'd be nervous, maybe. Not sure. Find out. We'll find out. Let's we'll see if we can. There he goes. Hey, folks, how you doing? Today? Good. I'm looking for Mike. Mike King. Yeah. That gentleman right there. There he is. So you don't tell me that it's just next door when it's really in a rail yard down in Indiana and it's waiting to get loaded onto a train and brought up to me for four weeks. That torqued me. Torqued me to the point where they had been sending me surveys about my purchasing experience and I sat down on the call. I don't do surveys. surveys. I don't have time for that kind of crap, but I do have it when I have a super good experience or a super bad experience. And well, you could see where this is going. This 60 question survey took me like 15 minutes to answer. Zero to 10, 10 being the best, zero being the worst, but zero, 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 zero. I was torqued, man. I was just done. I couldn't believe that this, this whole situation was playing out. And I was gonna let people know what I thought about it. Maybe skadoodle too. He's yeah. hiding now. Oh, okay. I had a bit of a hard day, haven't you? We had a rough day. So let me back this thing up. The guy that sold me the truck had no clue that I did YouTube videos, especially ones on trucks. So he wasn't treating me any different than the average everyday Joe. So then all of a sudden I got a phone call after I sent that survey off. I think I must have ruffled a few feathers because I got a phone call saying from the guy that sold me the truck, hey, what can I do to make this thing right for you? And I'm like, huh? It's my deal. It's my dealer, right? He's like, yeah, I, I saw the survey. I want to make this thing right. He says, the truck's in Indiana. He said, if I go down, if I personally drive down in my own vehicle and pick this thing up for you, would that make it right? And I'm like, well, that's a good start, but I really don't want my truck driven all the way back from Indiana when it could be hauled up on a rail car and getting zero miles on it. But then this little light bulb went off in my head. I'm buying a brand new snow power plow to put on the back of it. And their main shop is in Muskegon, Michigan. And I looked at a map and you go down to Indiana. I'm here, go down to Indiana. Muskegon, Michigan is literally three hours from where that truck is. And I said, Mike, I said, I like where you're going with this, but if you're gonna go all the way down there to pick up my truck, would you then drive it up to Muskegon, Michigan, have the snow power guys put the plow on and then drive it back down around, this is like the big lake, Erie or something, drive it back home to me. And he's like, if that'll make, if that'll give you a good truck buying experience, I will do that. And I'm like, okay, Mike, I love your willingness, but we've got to slow this train down a little bit because I need you to understand exactly what you're getting into. You're going to have a nine hour drive down to pick up my truck, three hours to get it up to the shop. They need at least six hours to put on the new snow power plow. And then what you're getting is a 16 foot plow. I said, this is not any average everyday snow plow. You're going to have 16 feet wide. Now you can fold this thing in so it hits at about nine feet, eight, nine feet wide, about the same width as a dually pickup truck, just a little bit wider, but this isn't your average everyday plow. So as you're coming home, especially through the Chicago traffic, it's gonna get a little nerve wracking. Trust me, I've done it twice already on my two other pickup trucks. How was it driving it with a 16 foot plow on the back? Easy, Was it, was it? And he says on the phone, he says, look, I'm an old farm kid. I can handle it as long as I can fold them wings in, I'm going to do this thing for you. And I'm like, holy crap, you do it. I want to see this. I want to see this. You do it. I want to see it. He got up at 3 a.m. Guys, he drove his truck all the way or he, he, hooked, he hooked it up. So he had one guy ride with him. They drove all the way down there, picked up my truck. He brought it up to snow power. He stayed in a hotel overnight while the snow and got up at 6 30 a.m the next morning started to put the snow power plow blade on at the shop well he didn't put it on they put it on bryson put it on actually bryson's a good friend of mine what an awesome dude these snow power people that's an entire another story i'm gonna actually you know i'm gonna save that for another video because that's an entire another story 
what happened at the shop and how fast these guys look. Just phenomenal. Anyway, they put the plow on. He drove it back. He, lit he literally, guys, saved me two solid days. You gotta do it okay? <laughs> All right. Guys, this is Mike. Hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> How many hours did you just drive? Too many. Too many. <laughs> you started uh, in the, here to Indiana, Indiana and yeah. then up to Muskego Heights, Michigan, and then Muskego Heights, Michigan, straight back to Hudson, Wisconsin, and then work tomorrow. I, All in two days. The way I count, yeah, you saved me two days of running, and I calculated it out. You had to put at least 20 hours of pure driving, I think closer to 22 hours of actual behind the wheel to make this thing to make happen. Yeah. Well, we felt obligated to treat our customers right. So. That's, that's, uh, that's way above and beyond anything I expected, but I haven't seen the truck yet. Should we go? Go check it out. Go check it out. Yeah, are you holding up all right? Yeah, we're good. Mike's had a had a rough day. No, this story doesn't end. This story gets even weirder and wilder. He's texting me pictures of his trip so I can see how things are going, kind of giving me an update. And I called him up this morning, just a few moments ago, because I just filled out the survey again. But this time, instead of giving him all zeros, I gave him all tens. You don't go that far above and beyond without getting something in return. So I made sure that I gave this guy all rock solid tens, but I had some questions on the survey, so I called him back and he didn't pick up the phone. Well, you know what? He's a busy guy. We're all busy guys. He calls me back five minutes later and he's like, hey man, I'm sorry I couldn't pick up the phone earlier. One of my coworkers just died in my arms. I'm like, why are you calling me now? I would be freaked out. I'm like, what happened, Mike? He's like, he had a massive heart attack and he collapsed and passed away in my arms. And he's literally calling me five minutes after this happened. What the heck? This is insane. This entire story is wow. All right, the moral of this story is, you guys, it's never too late to make up for something that wrong that happened. I'll tell you right now, I went from thinking about this guy like bottom of the barrel to holy crap. The service was way beyond anything I would ever expect, especially from a guy I just never met and bought a car, a truck from. Nice. I like it. All set, ready to go. I like it. So what were your, what was your impression of the guys from Snow Power? Great. It was great to work with. Dude. To work with. We had a good time when we were there. I'm, I'm telling you right now, Bryson and Rick, just phenomenal dudes. I've worked with them for over a year now. I can't say enough good things about working with them guys. They, they educated me on uh, all this work, and it was a very, it was a very neat experience. I'm glad it went. Yeah. But, yep. Okay, so tell me about the truck because I don't know anything about this one. To be honest with you, you literally just texted me, "Here's a truck. Here's Do you want to buy it?" Okay. And I. I mean, I didn't even think about even haggling with you. I didn't even, I'm just like, yeah, go ahead. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, 2018 Ram 2500. Okay. 6.4 Hemi. Um, automatic. It's got a factory paw prep group, so we'll be covered under warranty. That's an important point, you guys. When you go to buy a new truck, you're going to want to make sure if you're going to put a plow on it, you've got to get that plow prep package because otherwise you have no warranty. That's a huge. Of, a lot of guys don't realize that in the industry. And, Part of the reason why it was such a pain in the butt for us to get you a truck and we ended up going to Indiana to get one. So it's it's important. If you yep. break something on the truck two weeks or two years from now, you want to be covered. So. Yep. Okay. Anything else we need to know about this thing? There's not a lot to it. Um, I'll go through the radio and stuff with you and uh, how the keys work, and but it's a pretty basic setup. Okay. Uh, it's built to work. It's not a frills truck it's built to work and perform that's, that's what there for that's what i wanted except it's got carpet <laughs> you bring it in? i hate carpet i hate carpet all right but it's got black carpet at least so that's not bad all right let's take a look inside this is nice this is uh wow this is nicer than i'm used to in a work truck that's for sure of... what kind of bed liners in this factory spray and bed liner. okay yep. so it's, right straight from the factory. it's not rhino it's not mm -hmm. Uh, Line X, this is something that Dodge provides. Okay. Mike, excellent job. Thank you for everything. Yeah. I mean, talking about turning a bad situation into an amazing situation, that's the story I wanted to show guys. I don't think it's ever too late to turn something around. 
ever, ever, ever. Because we believe in customer service, and through no fault of our own, you got bad customer service, unfortunately. Until we took over and made things right. So. Boom! I'm gonna go check this thing out. My first Dodge pickup truck I've owned, and I immediately noticed some things that I actually appreciate. Now, I didn't think I was gonna like this truck. I didn't think I was gonna like this truck at all, but it was the only regular cab pickup truck that I could buy. And I'll tell you right now, I actually like this truck. It brings me back to the old days. It's just bigger. When you're sitting in this truck compared to the Ford, you just you have a you have a greater sense of space and room. Everything inside of the truck is also very well laid out. And then when you pop the hood and you go underneath, it reminds me of the 80 Chevys and the 80 uh, Fords that I used to own. You can crawl inside and actually work on it. Too many vehicles nowadays, when you open the hood, it looks like they poured all of the parts out and filled them all the way up. This one, you actually got space to get in here. You can actually see things. You actually can kind of figure out what the hell is going on. You just don't open up the hood and go, holy crap. Look at the space that they give you in this. This is nice. This is actually really nice. Now, this is the, the Dodge Gasser, and this is the Ford Gasser, and you can see that there is not nearly as much room. Now, I'm not complaining. I love this truck. Um, my Ford Gassers, my two Ford Gassers, have been awesome. Not good on fuel, just dependable, strong, good all the way around. This Dodge, if it, if it holds up anything like these, this is gonna be a good truck. Let's go inside of it because um, when you're actually in it, you, it just feels like you have a lot more room inside the truck than you do in the Ford pickup trucks as well. I mean, you got a bigger dash. You have more space behind the seat. I noticed that right away. Like the space from here to here, you've got this entire storage compartment there. You don't have that in the Ford. You just don't have that much space. Um, you know, one of the things about the Ford in a regular cab pickup truck is I wanted it to be tighter, but sometimes tighter, it's almost too tight, it's almost too small. This is a regular cab pickup truck, but it gives you just enough little extra space that it feels right. It just, it really feels good. And I, this is kind of blowing me away because I, I bought this truck because I figured I was gonna hate this truck and I was figuring I'm gonna pick this thing apart for the next three years so that if anybody out is out there gonna be buying a Dodge truck, they'll know what to do, what not to do, etc., etc. I was hoping, well, I wasn't hoping. I mean, I'm glad that I like this truck, but I figured I was gonna hate this truck. Look at, you got cup holders in the door, all right? That's nah, not a big deal. So you got a storage compartment right here you can fit a lot of stuff in here, and I'm like, well, where the hell am I gonna put my pop? Boom, one, two, three different storage compartments inside the truck, plus you've got, oh, hey, there's my wallet. You got plenty of space in here, USB ports, um, auxiliary cables, things you need, cigarette lighter, auxiliary USB port, a pocket in the dash above it, then you have your glove compartment underneath, it's not over fancy, it's just nicely balanced. And then the whole dash with the hood, much bigger feel to this truck than I've experienced with the Fords by far. Just enough amenities to make it nice without making it overkill. There's not a whole lot on the side of the truck, like appearance wise, there's nothing on it. And I, lo I don't like, I don't like that. I don't like the chrome and gadgets, so the plainer the better because then if I want to do something, I got a clean canvas to work off from. Just a lot of little things that I'm noticing right away that I did not expect. I was expecting to be getting probably the least desirable of the three brands, and I'm being surprised right now. And I will keep you guys updated as I work this truck, as I use this truck, over the next few years and let you know good, bad, and in between. For the first time Frankie's seen the truck, but get inside, open up that door once, over on that side, Frankie. Something I wanna show you inside. Pop that front seat open. 
pop, pop, pop that front seat down once. Right, low. Look at it's not a lot of space, but it's way more space behind the front seat than I've had in any other regular cab truck. At least me, but that's because I've driven all Fords, and those you can barely squeeze your fingers behind the seat. Right, right. This one you've actually got some room, and when you actually sit in the truck and you drive it, your dash is bigger, your hood is bigger, everything on the truck just feels just bigger enough, that, but without being too massive that you can't use it. The one thing I hate, I hate about this truck is the mirrors. Why is that? Worst freaking mirrors I've ever seen. They make oh, you nauseous. Small? Dude, they just make you nauseous. Oh, I don't know. I'd, like, I'd rather have them than the big monster ones. Really? Yeah. Well, I guess not for, for your use. I want monster ones. I want it to look like like when a car flashes me, when the car puts their high beams on behind me, they're getting their high beams right back in their own face. Yeah. Honestly, I thought I was going to hate this truck. All right. Literally, guys, it was nuts. Nuts, 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 nuts. But I want to hear your experiences with car dealers, good and bad, because I'm going to guess there's plenty of them. I don't know if the stories will be this wild, but I love your stories. Love them, love them, love them. Comment down below. Tell me about it. And hey, while we're here commenting and linking down below, check out these two videos I did right here. My armpit's sweaty. Nope. Check out these two videos I did right here. That's all I got for you guys today. God bless you guys. Go get them. All right, you guys, here's an update. I've actually been working this truck now for a while, and I still like it as much as the day I bought it. So we ended up buying a second one for the company, and I'm going to walk you through that, but then we did something a little bit unique. I ended up buying a half-ton work truck as well, but I didn't buy a Dodge. I did something a little bit wild and crazy. I took a Dodge work truck to a Ford dealer and a Chevy dealer, and I wanted to compare and contrast half-ton work trucks, and that video is coming down the pipeline because what the reason I had such a difficult problem finding this truck in the first place is because it's a three-quarter ton with some very specific requirements for snow plowing that just aren't very popular. Now, the more popular trucks are the half-tons, but there's a way that you need to spec those out, and we're going to actually take one from one dealer to another dealer and actually show you compare and contrast these trucks and I'll let you know which one I bought. Take your best guess what that next one is. God bless you guys and stick around. We got a lot more cool stuff coming. And now you guys can look at these videos because now, now, you know, I really need to time this better. Check these videos out. Now, go get them you guys.